I found four 3D prints that make using the rotary attachment on the Xtool F1 Ultra so much easier to use. And all of them are free. So I'm multitasking a little bit today, trying to get video footage shot while making dinner. I do like cooking and from time to time, if you guys ever want me to do recipes, you know, by all means, leave a comment. In fact, I cook everything gluten-free. So if you're curious on how I make things like cookies and such, I certainly could do that, you know, kind of an offbeat topic. Tip when cooking pasta, salt your water like the sea. And if you're going to then add it to a sauce or like a, you know, sauce meat combo that I do here on the skillet, cook it till al dente. So just under perfect where you would want it. That way you can add it to that sauce and it will continue to cook. You might think, well, you have a really big machine. Why not use the rotary attachment for the Juicy Cloud? I mean, isn't that one of the perks? And it is, but it's one of those where it requires doing some additional attaching and setting things up in light burn. And it was one of those when I was looking at the instructions, I just felt like it was a little too complicated for my brain. One of those, I'm just not ready to tackle that challenge yet. Although now I feel a little more confident, especially because I know that you really can't effectively get clear glass engraving with the F1 Ultra without like coating the surface with either some laser marking material or tempera paint. So I may approach that challenge. I think honestly, more of it is trying to get it set up in light burn. That looked a little complicated. So I need to do some reading on it, but I'm getting off topic. Ultimately, I wanted to try out the rotary engraver on the F1 Ultra. In particular, I wanted to try and sublimate these that I've had sitting underneath my desk, honestly, for a couple months. I had seen a YouTube short where somebody had engraved the frosted glass and really thought it was a really pretty look with a pattern, and I wanted to try and duplicate that. And I was successful, as you can see, it's sort of a lovely little boho chic pattern. And I was able to do a complete wrap 100%. And it wasn't too difficult. The biggest challenge, honestly, was trying to set up the Rotary Tool Pro. One of those coming out of the box, I would have thought it would have had better instructions. I mean, Xtool, if you're listening, put some better instructions together or put like a QR code with a link to a video to show people because it was definitely a little more complicated than I wanted. Something you definitely want to know is the RA2 out of the box without the accessory kit does not work very well with the F1 Ultra. It honestly tips if you want to try and do anything larger than just a portion of the plate, which I find to be very strange. Now, they have an accessory kit, which I definitely think is worth the money. And the two came together with the bundle that I had picked when I purchased the machine. The accessory kit is definitely worth it. It includes a sort of extension piece that has a tilt feature for the chuck attachment which from what I could tell on YouTube, you really want to be using the chuck attachment. It works much better than just the rollers, but who knows, maybe the rollers still work pretty well. But ultimately I had to unscrew the section that basically plugs into the machine, remove the rollers, remove the base, and then attach the chuck attachment to that, and then in turn attach that to the new section from the accessory bundle. I think my biggest issue with the instructions is that it uses a lot of different M4, M3, M5 screws, and there are different lengths, and the screws really aren't labeled very well in the packaging. And honestly, I was scrambling around trying to find which screws were the ones that you were supposed to use. Now, part of that could be the fact that I had kind of opened both boxes and sort of dumped everything together. So I didn't necessarily have the two sets separate. That might've made life easier. That being said, Xtool, label the screws. You'll make people much happier. Once I managed to get that assembled and all of that looked pretty well, it seemed to work. There's two different sort of like handles for the chuck attachment. I ended up initially putting on the big ones, realizing they were too big and then put on the small ones. And that held my cup that I was testing, which has a diameter of 75 millimeters on the outside. It's probably a little bit smaller, maybe 70 on the top, but that one, the smaller one worked. But the design itself is somewhat flawed in the fact that, again, you can't use the entire bed because it falls over. And on top of that, some things are difficult to reach and the lineup isn't as accurate as it could be. Things could be much easier. Fortunately, the 3D printing community has already come to the rescue. So looking online, and I found most of these actually were available through Maker World. And since I used Bamboo, it was easy enough to really pull these up on my phone. I found four prints that made my life much easier. The first one that I have, and I don't show initially this being attached, but it's this sort of back plate that goes behind 
the grippers of the cup and that gives you an area to line up to especially if you're using a cup that is larger than the grippers and you're putting the grippers on the inside like if you're doing like a large tumbler in my case that didn't really matter with the example that i'm using but i have seen some video where that is super helpful simple little back plate easy thing to add another thing that's extremely useful a block to set the RH2 Pro on so that it lines perfectly with the base. Yes, I know, I 3D printed a block. Could you stack things and get it to the right height? Sure you could, but this one's the perfect height. It's got little lips so that the thing stays in place. I mean, give the maker some credit. Simple, does the job. That enabled everything to stay level and I could slide it back and forth and take advantage of the full area of laser cutting with the rotary attachment. Now, lining things up then can get a little complicated. Ideally, you can really, with the rotary attachment, with the chuck feature, move it to wherever you need it, and it's not a problem. But another maker, and I will link all of these prints in the description, was able to go in and create a little guide for the base of the accessory attachment that can be easily screwed in to the base of the F1 Ultra plate. Now, he does include some additional attachments for screws if you want, and you can pick up a pair of, I think it's M3 screws, but honestly, the ones that are included with the X-Tool that have, or for the little corner jig, work just fine with this. So again, these are all simple little additions that I think X-Tool should really consider in the near future to making life easier for their users. So the final one, and I didn't notice this until after doing the engraving, was when it comes to attaching the cup to the chuck rotary, there is a wheel that you turn just behind it to loosen and tighten the little grippers. But the gear could be easier to manage and manipulate, especially if you're somebody who maybe struggles with some dexterity at times. Fortunately, somebody thought of this as well, and there is a gear that you can actually put in place, it requires just unscrewing three of the screws on the machine, to then screw it back into place. And this makes manipulating the grippers so much easier. Again, a simple print, simple modification, fantastic design. Now, one other thing that I will mention is these little legs for the lever that allow you to put it on a curved surface. Because when engraving to get the best results, you want the cup to be completely level. And x -Tool includes a level that you can sit on here. But Admittedly, it would make it look nicer if it would sit and you wouldn't have to hold the lever as well as adjust the wheel at the same time. And these simple legs that were designed enable it use to put the lever on a curved surface and have it stay fairly secure. So again, a simple print, but it makes a huge difference. Now setting up the check is pretty easy. If you know the diameter of your product, you can put that in or you can measure the perimeter. And when you import your art, if you put a square background on it, you can then do a framing and it will completely show with a blue line where the entire design is going to go, which enabled me being able to line things up pretty easily. Another thing I did was make a very small pencil mark at the base of it so that when I did the rotary framing, I was able to make sure that it went all the way. Initially, it didn't seem like it did and I made adjustments and found that it did actually go slightly over. So even though it didn't get exactly back to my line, it, the calculations do seem to work correctly. I also set up the additional straight line laser attachment that came with the accessory kit. This is really helpful because you can turn this line on. It shows you essentially where the center of the cup is going to be. Then you can take a picture and line up your point of rotation to that point. With those prints in place, I was able to go and run the engraving on this cup. And I looked around and ultimately ended up using 50% power at a speed of 50 millimeters a second. And I used 160 lines per centimeter for my settings. Although I do feel like some of those lines were missed and it might work better with a slightly higher setting. I will try that in the near future, but it did give decent results. Enough for me to test and know that I was firing, getting through the material and getting a good engrave. So that's working with the rotary attachment. Fairly easy to do. It's made me want to tackle the Dweaky Cloud and using its rotary attachment so that I can do clear glass because clear glass is a little more difficult to do with a diode or a fiber laser. And I hope to do that here in the near future as well as show you guys some additional product objects that I've done with the new machine, including engraving and color. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a good Friday. And as you can see, shrimp scampi is what's for dinner tonight. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.